Anybody resonate with that idea? It's hard to be easy sometimes. Isn't it difficult in this world to be the one who's operating at the higher vibration, to be the bigger person, to be the first one to take the step back? I don't want to. It's just easier to be the one that's grumbling and the one that's fighting, yes? Have you found that? Yet what the world needs right now is us to, to make life a little bit easier, to be the one who is strong enough, courageous enough, bold enough, beautiful enough to elicit the change in the environment that we're all looking for, yes? Yeah, so get over it. It's hard. It's hard to be the easy one. It's hard to be the, the one full of light, but do it anyway, yes? Namaste anyway, as Richard Coker likes to say, when somebody shows up in your environment and they're an SOB, namaste anyway. <laughs> the God in me beholds the God in you. It's not easy, but we are not about the easy path. We are about the transformative path, yes? We read in scriptures uh, clearly that it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Father, the Mother. Let's say this together. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's the Father, the Mother, the isness, the, the source the, of all creation has given to us. In fact, the universe is set up in such a way that cre all creation is conspiring for your good. It is the good pleasure of the earth, of the universe, to provide for your well-being. Isn't that good news? That's not just good news, that's great news. But, however, not but, no buts here. <laughs> however, there's maybe a little bit less good news because this law, this is spiritual law, it knows only to give. It's giving us exactly what we're asking for, consciously and unconsciously. We're getting what is being delivered, signed, sealed, and delivered. It shows up and says, I'm yours, whether you like it or not. Starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. The spiritual law that feels so good, now this is what's showing up in my environment and it's hard to be easy. And it's difficult to be the light. But wait, the news gets even worse. <laughs> the less comfortable news is we must be willing. We must be willing to accept that which we have called and invited and, and magnetized to our life, no matter the package it comes in. You see, there's a collective subconscious soul that's bringing the world to our doorstep, to our heart, to our experience. And whether we like it or not, it is ours to accept. How does that feel? Last week, I asked you to, to suspend your yeah buts. Yeah, but, yeah, but. We're on a journey, unity and diversity, for the entire year. And I said, keep the yeah buts at bay. You can have a few of them today but do it in moderation. Go ahead and let, get in touch with the yeah, but machine, the monkey mind machine that's operating in there that says, well, that's a wonderful idea, yeah, but. That, that's a wonderful truth. Yes, I, everywhere I look, I see the face of God, yeah, but. Everybody is a perfect expression of God, yeah, but it's really hard to be easy with this person. So it's asking us to accept that which we are calling for, no matter the package it comes in. Today, our talk title is Radical Acceptance. Say that with me. And when it is hard, I am asking you to throw your arms wide open like the woman in that picture and say, okay, here I am. And I'm going, it, say that with me, come on. It, here I am. I'm asking you to be water-like. Water, the, the properties, the laws of water are to buoy you up, and those that drown are the ones that are fighting the water. It's going to take you home. The river will take you home, but when you fight it, it's dangerous. So radical acceptance says to the water of the universe, the water of spirit, the water of all life, I'm here, and I may not like what's showing up, but I'm going to be present to it with the understanding and the truth and the knowledge that a part of me individually invited this to my doorstep brought this, magnetized this to my doorstep so there might be a divine appointment happening here and not just an annoyance, not just an uncomfortableness. So again, last week I said hold off on your yeah buts, let them in. Let them in today because it's a process of evolution. Questions help us discover more truth. So we're going to dig beneath the surface a little bit more than we did last week. But Albert Einstein clearly gave us permission to do so when he said this. Let's say it together. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Yeah, but is a question. How do I apply this over here? It feels good when I'm sitting here on Sunday morning between 11.15 and 12.30 or if on a bad day, 1 o'clock. <laughs> I won't be long-winded today. 
but not so easy to apply when I go out there and they show up in my field or this circumstance shows up in my field. Here I am, radical acceptance, and then the yabbats are going to fly. We're going to welcome them today, let them in. Some people would say that acceptance is giving up. Ever heard that? Acceptance, radical acceptance is giving up, that it is admitting defeat or it's giving all your power away. Well, I'm gonna allow a yow but for the people who say that today. I'm gonna challenge that idea and maybe look a different way, have a new thought about what acceptance is. When defined only through the lens of the human ego, they're absolutely right. It is giving up all your power. It's admitting defeat. It's, it's just, it's quitting. On defined through the human ego and human mind. But I invite you to consider today that acceptance Acceptance at its ultimate is the very portal, the very avenue through which we receive that which we have magnetized to ourselves. That which has been in, in turmoil and bubbling up within the subconscious mind has now shown up and it's the way we receive the gift of God. It's a way that we not only receive it but then we implement that highest gift of God. Could it be that the jerks in your life, the people that you don't resonate with, are, there, are angels with skin on, helping you to grow? Anybody ever say at one point, I wanna grow? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're afraid to answer yes, because where's he gonna take me? Yeah. I wanna grow, now what's he gonna say? Let me hand back. If you wanna grow, you wanna grow. If you wanna evolve, you wanna evolve. Put your hands up proudly to the universe and say, I want to become me. I want to become more of me. Really? So I'm questioning those that said that that in of itself is giving up. It's not that at all, but consider instead that acceptance is the avenue through which we receive and implement the highest gifts of God, the gifts that our souls individually and collectively have invited. Have you noticed the state of the union these days? Yeah, this is the year we're going to be okay with talking about the different opinions on religious fronts and political fronts. If you notice the State of the Union, it appears to be very, very divided. And guess what? We're in an election year. It's only going to get more divided. Unless we turn the other cheek and find a different way and throw our arms open to here we are. This is what we've magnetized to ourselves. What are we going to do with the precious gift that has washed up? The whale has washed up on our beach. What are we going to do with it? Collectively and individually, the world is showing us exactly what we as a human race have invited in. Signed, sealed, and delivered. And it's saying, I'm yours. The whale's going to say, I'm yours. What are you going to do with me? Most of the world is going around poking the whale, complaining about the whale that's on the beach. I want to be among the ranks of the people that said, there's something on our beach that's calling for, for us to look at it for us to heal it, for us to transform it. So I'm saying let's be among those that are trying to get the whale back into the water instead among those who are cursing and complaining that why is Joel Blackford poking the whale? He's not doing it right. How did this get here? Let's argue for the next six months about why it is this whale got to our beach and let's waste the time and the whale begins to rot. And that's what's going to happen with the State of the Union, the State of the Union here and here. It's the more we argue, the more we fight, the more we repel, the more we judge, the more we're rotting from the inside out. And I'm saying let's be among the ranks of those who throw up in their hands and say, what are we going to do about the whale? Let's talk to each other. Unfortunately, we as society have become way more concerned with the packaging than we are with what's inside the packaging. Have you noticed that? We're so concerned, we've ordered a gift from the universe and it shows up and we complain and moan and groan about the packaging that it has come in. We're more concerned about the container the water is in than the water itself. Anybody thirsty for a different experience? Well, really? I'm really thirsty. I am parched for a different experience than what we are currently having as a human race. Anybody hungry for something more beautiful, more holy, more sacred, more pure? I'm saying get hungry. I'm saying get thirsty, be thirsty, and don't be afraid to say it. I'm a little bit thirsty. Bring it on in whatever container it is in. I don't know about you, but if I am thirsty enough, I will accept water, whether it comes in a decorative gold chalice or it comes in a dirty hand. If I am thirsty enough, 
I'm a lot less concerned if the water is showing up in a golden chalice, a clear glass, or a dirty hand. Let me drink. But I have to be thirsty enough, and I don't know if we've gotten thirsty enough. Sometimes we think as a human race for change to come, to be the change we want to see, it has to get so down and dirty and ugly that then finally you realize I'm thirsty. I just need to take a drink. I think we're at, we're at the crossroads, folks. We're at the place of being so thirsty, that critical choice point, am I going to drink no matter what form it's coming in, or am I going to say, no, I don't want it. I'm waiting for the golden chalice to show up. When I speak of radical acceptance, it is not resignation in the least. It is not support for bad behavior. I want you to hear that. Radical acceptance has nothing to do with accepting bad behavior or playing dead to an unlikable or maybe even dangerous condition. What if we looked at radical acceptance in a different way? Let's put that next slide up there. Read this together with me. Radical acceptance is the first step of the deep spiritual work of oneness and transformation. That's what we're about, isn't it? We come to unity. Unity, it's in our name. We're all about oneness, yes, but I don't like the package. Oneness, here's the avenue. Nope, I'm waiting for the golden chalice. Make it easy for me, make it easy for me. What if radical acceptance was the first and perhaps the most important step for its transformation collectively? For the world, the human race, and for me as well. Ah, oh, the yabbats are starting to fly, aren't they? The monkey mind is starting to work. It's the first step of the deep spiritual work, not surface spiritual work, which most people on the planet want to do. Let me have my spirituality, but make it easy for me. Let me put out the universe invitation. I want to grow, I want to evolve, but make it easy and make it come in the package I think it needs to come in. Your greatest teacher is coming wrapped in a package that you don't like, probably. I'm not the man I am today because of the easy celebratory moments. I'm the man I am today because I was on my knees and I had to dig beneath the surface to find something greater in me. That's the presence of God. Greater is that which is within me than the one that is in the world. The one that's in the world, nope, I want the chalice, I want the chalice, no. The, what, which, with, that which is within me says, drink even if the hands are dirty, even if the face is ugly to me, even if I don't understand. Transformation is about finding a softer, a gentler, a more spiritually sound way of using the energy of love and truth, the truth that we espouse from this platform every week to shift what is into the energy of what can be. You see, you're, the transformation is not just yours, it's, it's it's the collective. It's using the energy of what is. It's taking one or four whites, amen, 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 and saying, I will do whatever it takes to change at depth. I'm willing, I'm open, my arms are wide open, there's a whale before us, let me jump on in and do what I can to change it and to shift it, as opposed to judging and repelling and defending and claiming that somebody is less than. If we teach oneness, we cannot make exceptions to where you find the face of God. Sorry, folks. I'm not going to give you the wiggle room. It does not mean that you have quit working on a situation. It's quite the opposite. It doesn't mean that at all. It means you're willing to work diligently and passionately and 24-7 from the inside out and not the outside in. So I invite you to put your hand up on your heart. We had a wonderful heart math uh, teaching on Thursday night, and I realized that I do things unconsciously, but when I get a little out of control, I'm away from my notes, and I don't know what I want to say, or I start walking on dangerous territory, and it's like, uh-oh, something's about to come out of my mouth. All I got to do is this. I work from the inside out, not the outside in. Say that with me. I work from the inside out, not the outside in. So many people, religiously, politically, and otherwise, are working from the outside in. I'm saying we've got it all backwards. Ours is to look deeply and to work diligently from the inside out. It's defining myself by a higher order. Our master teacher Jesus, the elder brother, the way shower, walked right smack dab into the biggest trial of his life, the ugliness. But he did so with a nine mindset that said, I'm going in first. 
I know who I am. I know what I am about. I know where I come from. I know where I am going, and I will not waver in my commitment to that truth, so bring it on. In a dirty hand, in a golden chalice, whoever it shows up, I will drink, and then I will offer that drink to the next person that comes along. I'm saying the world is pretty darn thirsty. That was darn, not, not damn. And I'm saying we need to join the thirst and the hunger and get really busy about knowing who we are and doing the Father's work, the Mother's work, the Spirit's work. Whatever you give the name, I don't care what you call it, it's calling you to a greater vibration and a higher truth. It's a gentler and softer way of taking what is so that it can be transformed, transformation into what can be. Judgment will stop that process. Claiming and getting angry and fighting back. We said it last week, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth will leave us all blind and toothless. It's not working for us. So find a different way. Try a different method and get a different result. We all love to claim that. That's what insanity is, doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. How's that working for us? Not so well. So maybe try a different approach. Go ahead and have the yeah but, but make sure you breathe first. Go ahead and have a yeah, but, but make sure that you are checking with headquarters first, working from the inside out. It's living in a truth that a different reality is not only possible. So you're in the midst of tension. We're in the midst of chaos, which is the beginning of creation. It's allowing your mindset and your spirit to go, not only is it possible, it already exists in the field, signed, sealed, and delivered. The evolution you've asked for has been delivered in a dirty hand. So it's, let's quit talking about it in the future. Let's talk about it as a current reality. The change I want to see is already existing. I am the voice of God. I am the mind of God. I am the heart of God. I am the eyes of God. I am the ears of God. I am the presence of God right here in the middle of it, and I will drink. A different approach will always bring about different results. Let's go put that next quote up there. Let's read it together. A different approach can and will create different results. From the level of our heart, again, hand on your heart, say it with me. A different approach can and will create different results. Hallelujah. Amen. Let your passion ring. And don't play small with the spirituality, the beautiful teachings of unity. The beautiful teachings of possibility, stop playing small with it and implement it and use it. For a lot of us, our first impulse, have you noticed? A lot of us, our first impulse is to resist something when it shows up. Something we don't like when it shows up. Acceptance, radical acceptance requires overriding the egoic impulse. Yes, the egoic mind impulse and choosing to breathe. Take a breath with me. Breath. We all know this, shares the same root. The language goes back to spirit. It's breath and spirit are the same thing. So when you take a breath, the pause that refreshes, if you will, we pause to breathe into an experience. We are leaning into a higher power with a deep trust that what is before us, the whale, has spiritual value. That this person who's driving you nuts, who you just don't agree with, whether you've met them or not, you've made a judgment, has spiritual value, there's some reason the whale made its way to our beach. At some level, we have invited it. Ooh, yeah, but. Yeah, but. At some level, individually and collectively, whatever is happening, we have invited it. But we can transform it. So again, this is a first step. Radical acceptance is about moving in the energy of oneness and transformation. It does not happen with kicking the whale or judging the whale, or going to gather an army of people about why that whale is so evil, why that vote is so evil, why that religion is so bad. I'm tired of wasting time judging and pointing fingers. Let's get about the work of transformation and oneness and take the first step. Here we are. It's hot. It feels like hell. But I'm going to go ahead and be here for a minute and be the transformative power of God right in the middle. And then, hand on your heart, I will be the transformative power of God right in the middle. Together, I will be the transformative power of God right in the middle. Really? Are you ready for that? Because I guarantee you, if you really mean that, you're going to go out there and you're going to have the fire. 
You're going to have the fire, and you're going to have to make a choice. And I want you to remember the choice that you made today and the decision that you made today. Acceptance is a willingness to not make an enemy. Anybody good at making enemies? Let's just get real with each other. I'm really good at it. My human mind, you know, the ego is most dangerous when you put it in a corner. Put the ego in the corner, it's going to get really loud. And it's like a little child. You ever, parents in the room, you ever have a child that you try to ignore and go to a different room? Close the door, and the child doesn't go away. It's going to follow you. The whale will not go away. It's only going to begin to stink a little more. The child is going to scream a little bit louder. There's a lot of children asking for our collective attention today. Have you noticed that? And sometimes the children are showing up with older faces. <laughs> and they're banging at the door. And they're not going away, so maybe a different approach Rather than closing the door on that ugly behavior, those ugly words, we can open the door and say, okay, let's get to work. Let's get about the work of transformation. I'm going to offer you a three-step process today. You don't have to even worry about writing it down because it's really simple. It's basically step back, step in, and then step forward. Step number one is important. You find yourself in a, reactor, a reaction. I'm reacting to somebody and I don't like what's happening in my body, my mind. Step back. Take a breath. What does the breath do? The breath reminds the body. This is what the heart math was all about the other night. I'm not going to die here. This opinion is not a saber-toothed tiger that's going to kill me. I'm going to step back and get a wider view. You see, when you step back, the view gets wider. Have you noticed that? I find it much more uh, easy to enjoy the beauty of a fire if I'm not standing in the middle of it. I can step back from the fire and get some perspective. What a beautiful, look at the colors in the fire. But so many of us want to just get into the fire and participate, fire for fire. There I am, burning up, and we're all burning up together. You've got to step back. And if it's really dangerous, it's more than one step back. You do this one until you feel safe. I find it much easier to love some people from a distance than I do in their field. And that's okay, yes? And guess what happens? The view gets wider and I get some perspective. Oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Or, oh, maybe my judgment is adding fuel to the fire. So I begin to look with different eyes, the eyes of the Christ, the eyes of the light, the ears of the Buddha, the heart and the spirit of your divine self, not your ego, and you're putting the ego in the corner. Then you step in. You see, you step back. Now you've got to step in and connect with that Buddha, connect with that light, connect with that love. Yes? This clear indication to the body, the mind, and the soul, you're not going to die here. And now I get in touch with the compassion I was created in and as, the understanding I was created in and as. I recognize oneness. I can't do it standing in the fire, but from here I step in, I can see that you and I are one. Beyond my judgments, beyond my concerns, beyond my doubts, beyond my anger, and beyond my fears, you and I are one. You don't ever step forward till you've stepped in and you can get that. But many of us don't, aren't willing to do that. In fact, we're not even willing to step back. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Spiritually, politically, mentally, emotionally, let's go. Come on, bring it on. One of us is going to be on the ground when this is all over. I'm the winner. You're the loser. How's that working for us? Not so well. Yeah, but that's what they're playing. That's what they're playing, that kind of thing. I'm the winner. You're the loser. I'm saying don't play their game. Play the game of love and step back. Put your hands down. I find a lot more gets healed on the planet with open hands than I do with closed fists. That's what I'm calling us to do. And it makes no sense to the human ego that's now so far in the corner that the child is screaming. Don't do it. They're going to win. Don't do it. They're going to hurt you. If you step back and keep distance, you're going to be safe because God is more powerful than behavior. Love is more powerful than behavior. You believe that? Love is more powerful than opinion? Yeah. Love is more powerful than blindness? That's what the whole darn gospels are about. Love is more powerful than anybody's blindness. And then with compassionate eyes, I step back, I step in, I begin to have compassion for the suffering. Let me tell you, the state of the world, I don't believe anybody in the government is in a place other than suffering right now. 
That's what's happening. It's suffering, but we just add to the suffering. Let me put some more, let me stand in the fire and add some more wood as opposed to standing back, getting some perspective and say, boy, do I need to love more fully, more readily, more anxiously, more purposely be the presence of love, the Christ mind. It is what it is, we say all the time. Ah, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm tired of playing that game. That's a cop-out. That's running from it. Step back, step in. It is what I make it. We are meaning-making machines. This is what I make it. What's going on here is what I make it. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You are creative with the ability to change the face of the planet, but you better change what's going on here first, or nothing will change out here. But when you get that change, when you get that, how powerful you are, now you step forward. And you're bringing a different mindset, a different consciousness. It's no longer a battle. It's no longer win or lose. It's I am going to be the Christ. Jesus walked into Jerusalem knowing what was waiting for him. And the world said, don't do it. The human ego said, don't do it. There's death there. There are people out to get you there. And Jesus did not walk into Jerusalem with any idea that somebody's out to get me, but that I am going to be the transforming agent of love in the Jerusalem. And a new Jerusalem, a new consciousness will be born as a result of my commitment, my sight, my hearing, my soul, and my spirit will change the face of the planet. Yes, he died at the end of the story. We'll wait till Easter to talk about that. But I'm saying we as a human race have got to die to the way we have been doing business. We as a nation have got to die to the way we have been doing business and so that a new way can come. And it looks like a dirty hand. Man, does it look dirty. I'm going to drink and I will offer it to you as well. And maybe, maybe the beginning work of oneness and transformation that we are celebrating this year can begin to happen. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Yes, I'm asking for that single step, to step forward with a new mindset founded in a higher vibration. And the reptilian mind is going to throw a tantrum. The kid's going to throw a tantrum at the door. I like to become very Buddhist when that happens. Thich Nhat Hanh is one of my heroes, one of my way shores. Let's say it together. No mud, no lotus. We all want the payoff. New thought. We want the payoff. I want the glory and the beauty, but I don't want to go through the mud to get it. There's no lotus until there is a little bit of mud. He mentions that mindfulness requires us to first recognize suffering. A lot of new thought churches are puppy dogs and rainbows. No, we're not going to be one of those. We're going to recognize there's suffering on the planet. And sometimes suffering looks like bad behavior. Sometimes suffering looks like angry, violent words. Have you noticed that? Mine and others. But that's what acceptance is. First recognizing suffering and then taking care of the suffering. Two-part process. I'm noticing it. I'm stepping back. I'm getting in touch with the healing power that I am. Now I step forward and I take care of the suffering. He says we're not meant to suppress a feeling. We don't suppress feelings here. We're having a human exper experience. But instead, embrace the feeling and take care of it like a mother would her child. I remember as a foster parent, there was books and manuals about what you're supposed to do when a kid is out of control. And the greatest tool we found with our foster kids was when they were angry and they were violent and they were fearful. It wasn't spanking them, which is what we're trying to do. Your bad behavior, let me spank you. How's that working for us? Not so good. Let me put you on time out. Let me put you away where I don't have to look at you. That doesn't even work anymore. What worked with these foster kids is we got behind them and we wrapped our arms around them. We wrapped our legs around them. And you gotta be real careful because foster kids are fighters. Bam, you can lose, break your nose really easy with a head. Find a way to embrace the ugliness and then hold them. And then hold them, even when you are exhausted, even when you are tired, even when you're a little bit scared. And what happened every single time was this.
the fight was over. Just because we loved more fully and tightly. There's a lot of people that need to be wrapped, and that doesn't make any sense to your reptilian mind. Hug the enemy. It's what Jesus told us to do. Love your enemies. I like to go a step further. Forgive me, Jesus. You have no enemies. You have children who are misbehaving because they've forgotten that they need to be loved. That, that takes a long process. That's a marathon, folks. It's going to take a while to turn this boat around. But I'm telling you, it's the only thing that's going to change it. How's it working for us? Not so good. A mother transfers energy with a physical embrace of her child when they are afraid, when they are angry. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. We transfer energy when we spiritually, radically accept and embrace those whose behavior is indicating suffering. Suffering takes many forms. One of my favorite Bible stories, and uh, Brian, when you get a chance, you can put money, uh, some music. You can put some money there too if you want. <laughs> Story of Jenna in Genesis. You've all probably seen the Broadway play, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. It's a pretty powerful story from the Bible. He was handed a bum deal. His brothers threw him into slavery, kicked him to the curb. Anybody ever felt like that? Sure. Life right now, people, politicians, spiritual leaders are kicking people to the curb, saying you belong and you don't. And using scripture as a weapon, goat, sheep, good or bad, good. How's that working for us? It's not working so well. I'm saying embrace the goat as you embrace the lamb. Embrace the ugly in the dirty hand and drink as you're embracing the golden chalice. But in that story, he was given a bum rap and he had a choice to make, a big choice. He could have been ticked off and angry and was given the opportunity to put them to death to make them starve, to make them pay your bad behavior. Now karma sucks. But Joseph didn't choose that. He didn't choose that at all. He chose a higher consciousness. He stepped back, he stepped in, and then he put his arms out with radical acceptance and says there's a different way. I don't have to kill you. And this is the scripture that I carry with me because anybody that works with me will tell you I have a tendency to get defensive. I have a tendency out of my own insecurity to not like the mud when it shows up. I don't want to play in the mud, it feels uncomfortable. But I've learned to step back, step in, and to say this, this particular phrase that has saved me a number of times. Together, what they intend for evil, God will use for good. I'm asking us, this entire year of diversity, to channel your inner Joseph, and to let a Technicolor movie emerge from our human, our collective humanity, that something more beautiful can come from our willingness to fight the human ego. No, don't even fight it, put it in the corner. The reptilian mind, put it in the corner. What they intend for evil, God will use for good. Love, it's gonna sound political, but let it be if you want, love wins. Plain and simple, kindness wins. Compassion wins. Judgment loses. Fight loses. The spirit will always win. And so with that phrase in mind, I want to ask you, who are the days in your life? Who are the days in your life today? Who are the thems? Who are the people you have put out of your heart? Who are the politicians you've put out of your heart? Those people. Who are the people that have showed up in your field? God has delivered them, signed, sealed, and delivered. Here's your lesson. Here's your growth find a different way when we can radically shift to a place of radical acceptance a different mindset holding the energy of us wrapping your arms around them watching your nose keeping safe from a distance but wrapping love around them we create understanding rehabilitation we create the healing we all want we create community dialogue and oneness in the midst of the diversity Today's message is step number one of a thousand mile journey. Find a way to wrap your arms around those people. And how do I know this? How do I know this? I get to get up here and say this. This isn't pretty theory I learned in seminary. 
They taught it. I know because I went through the mud. I've been through a lot of mud in my life. And I had a lot of yeah buts. I had a lot of exceptions. And what I learned is that God is more powerful than my exceptions. God is more powerful. Love is more powerful than my exceptions, than my yeah buts.